I'm not sure how to ask this question, but I'm I, I'm very curious when I talk with somebody that has played a great deal of chess. I do it, but I am completely just a I'm just uh, playing. I, I don't focus on it in a deep way to learn new moves or anything like that. But I love the game. But when I find that people that are really truly good at it, the pieces themselves have been anthropomorphized, right? They 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 take on some characteristic. Is that true of you? Do you have a feeling about bishops or a feeling about knights and rooks? You know, uh, the, the chess, again, think about this, you know, chess is the game of space and time. And uh, certain pieces are assigned attributed an ability to move right and their ability to move is one two squares or eight squares so they have a different dynamic ability and their shape sometimes resembles or that ability to move so when you say do you have that was a sophisticated answer you know or attempt to be a sophisticated answer you know the shape of the of the pieces is traditional and they they all look the same throughout the history but what is truly different about the pieces is the way how they move and the their ability to move on the board the, consequently some pieces which move which have a which project themselves further are stronger than the pieces which don't. Because at the end of the time, as I said, you know, the chess is the game of space and time. And don't forget, you know, as Napoleon says, you know, like in any battle, the lost space you can always recover, but the lost time never. So what I say, it is not the time on the clock, it is the time that you will conquer the most of the space in the shortest period of time. That is that you don't need to make three moves to do one thing, that you need to make one move which is going to capture the most or to control most of the space. So, yes, different, different pieces have a different feel, not because they look differently, but they can do different things. It had never dawned on me that the way that the pieces are carved, they do like the 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 rook being in, just in being able to go in straight lines, and the knight being able to jump up and over too. Like I'd never thought about that. That's very clever. Um, so is is chess something you still you play often? It's something you make time for now. Well, I play. <laughs> I'm reluctant to say that because both. My family is not very happy. Whenever I have a free time, I would, I would find a way, you know, to go and to play a speed chess game, claiming, you know, that I need to clean something or something like that. So yes, I do play chess whenever I can, although not as much as uh, I used to. For me, chess always was more than a game and less than life. So what I mean by that is chess is more than a game. But chess, again, it is very, I would say, it be imprudent to think that chess will provide all answers to, to the life, life problems. So when you ask me, you know, do I play chess? I play chess as a hobby. I play chess as something which will relax me. I play chess as sometimes when I want to have an additional enjoyment, but I do not think that chess is an answer to all the challenges that I face in my life. Is that something you have to say because there are people that do think that it is an answer to your life or that there is Absolutely. some meaning? Absolutely. What, what does that look like if somebody thinks that? that? That means reducing life to the 64 squares and to the, to, the, to, the, to the figures which are on the board. And then sometimes people try to make an, an, an ultimate analogy that everything in the real life resembles the chessboard. And that is a reduction which people should resist. It's interesting because I was talking with a friend of mine the other day, a guy named Rob Long, and we were talking, should you learn to play 
the game you're just to the, or learn to play the man that you're playing against. And we kind of came to the conclusion that um, in today's modern age, computers do allow you to just play the game, right? It's, it's just it has automatic moves. Um, but there's something lost there because you are actually when you're sitting across from another human being, you are playing the man or the woman um, trying to figure out what are they going to do and having your reaction. What are your, what are your thoughts on that? Well, objectively, objectively, you play only the pieces and you play only the game. You play against the pieces. You are not playing against uh, other human beings. Objectively. Wow. Okay. Subjectively, those pieces are moved by another human being. And we all have our strengths and our weaknesses. And if you know the weaknesses of another human being, you will actually be in a position in which you will better anticipate his or her moves and consequently easier win the game. So think about, in, of course, in chess there is a less element of chance. It shouldn't be element of chance at all, but the less element of chess chance than in poker. So you can play poker objectively, right? But sometimes, because of the element of chance and the element of subjectivity, you do play the player. You know. And that's the reason why you have those uh, silly situations, you know, in which they have those sunglasses, you know, in order not to see their facial... They are perfect COVID examples, right? You know, you put the mask and you play the best possible game. So uh, the answer to that is, ob from the objective standpoint, you pay, play against the pieces. But you always play a human being. Thanks for checking out this podcast short. If you like this interview, make sure you hit the like and subscribe button and hit that bell so you always get notified about this podcast. And if you're really interested in conversations like this, you may want to consider joining the Articulate Ventures Network. To find out more, go to network.articulate.ventures. Yeah.